Hello everyone, uh, welcome and thank you for participating. Uh, my name is Yani Kurniawan. I am the production manager of Yayasan 17,000 Pulau Imaji. So uh, today we will be presenting a session of lead trade. So lead trade is a master class and seminars on content trading, covering all the right things about rights and intellectual property. Uh, so uh, this event is a part of uh, the road to Jack 10 uh, that will start uh, in November uh, 2021. So uh, today uh, we will be uh, discussing the book market in Egypt, so the challenges and the opportunities. Uh, so in this book talk, we will discuss about the book market in Egypt, especially for, especially for foreign books, uh, uh, such as Indonesian books and content, uh, the opportunity there and the challenges there as well. We, uh, the, the today's session will be moderated by Anton Kurnia, our very own rights uh, agent. And we are honored to have uh, Ms. Fatima Abbas, the international publishing and literary consultant, and also the founder of FALA, literary agency from Cairo, Egypt. So uh, without further ado, I will have uh, Mr. Anton and uh, Fatima to have the session. I hope okay. you enjoy the session. Okay, thank you, Yanni. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us in this talk. Our topic today is uh, book market in Egypt challenges and opportunities. I'm Anton Kurnia. I'm the host of this book talk. And this event is organized by Yayasan 17,000 Pulau Imaji, Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, our, our speaker today is Fatima Abbas. Fatima Abbas is an international publishing and literary consultant and founder of Fala Literary Agency. She is also a li literary translator. It, it began in uh, 2014 when she started attending the Cairo International Book Fair, where she responsible she was responsible for the section of English and French learning books due to her fluency in both languages. Then her passion for publishing and the book industry in general was discover discover, and she began to get involved in every detail of the profession until she became the head of the external relations and translation department for one of the most reputable publishing and distribution houses in Cairo, Egypt. In addition to her work as a literary translator with three literary works translated from English into Arabic in the market and one from Arabic into English, which is not yet been published, she now has her own literary agency, Fala, and works as an international publishing and literary consultant, which enables her to assist both the author and publishing professionals in all global markets in the various fields of publishing, distribution, marketing, and printing. Hi, Fatima. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Antonio. Thank you for uh, considering me and thank you so much for that introduction. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. How <laughs> <Okay>. are you? <laughs> I'm fine too. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's start, uh, Fatima. Uh, okay. Uh, I will, I would like to give you my first question. Uh, would you please share with us information about book market and publishing world in Egypt uh, nowadays, please, uh, in general, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, if you're asking in general, so um, the book market in Egypt was doing really good, but uh, if you are asking nowadays, which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. uh, during the, the, the pandemic, pandemic situation, yeah? Mm -hmm. Very, very tough and, oh, okay. and very hard on us as publishers and on the publishing industry in Egypt as don't receive um, any kinds of support, whether from the government or from any other private sectors. So uh, uh, the publisher is um, in, in, uh, in a kind of a risk at the moment, also because they had to cancel the Cairo International Book Fair in January mm -hmm. and they postponed that to uh, the 13th of this month. Mm -hmm. Hopefully mm -hmm. they 
be able to organize it well and and people will, will be able to trust the events and and come as we used to have them like before but mm-hmm. uh generally speaking uh, i guess uh, we are uh, in in a real challenge i don't want to say that we are struggling but let's say that we are in a real challenge because mm-hmm. the pandemic has hit us so badly and as yeah. i just mentioned don't receive any kind of support so each publisher has to stand by his own and to mm-hmm. depend on himself and mm-hmm. at some cases let's say to um, rearrange the priorities uh, each publisher has because things are completely different now and as you see if every every day we, we have something in you we don't know when this hassle uh, is going to end and yeah. when if, even we can go and um, and survive again or not so uh, in my modest point of view i guess uh, we are a bit uh, surviving to be able to uh, yeah. stay still in in the industry okay but in general i, I think it's uh, the situation is uh, it's get, getting better or what do you think i'm i'm sorry yeah. I, i didn't hear that yeah uh what about the situation now is it getting better now or getting worse actually no no mm-hmm. not really the picture is a bit mm-hmm. blur because as i mentioned they canceled the book fair which is the main mm-hmm. reason why we are there it's a mm-hmm. very important book fair and it's the mm-hmm. biggest in the MENA region when it mm-hmm. comes to the number of audience yeah. so uh, a publisher depends heavily on on the book fair so okay. hopefully Hopefully, things will change, or at least uh, to be balanced a bit after this edition at the end of this month. Okay. Okay. We hope uh, the situation will be getting better. Yeah. Yes, I hope uh, so. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, the Cairo Book Fair is uh, was postponed, and I think uh, the book fair will be um, will uh, it will be. Uh, the Cairo Book Fair in this uh, in the end of this month is is that uh, yeah, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. The opening yeah. is uh, on the 13th and uh, we okay. will start uh, accepting people starting from the first of July. Okay, would would you please tell us about the fair, uh, um, more about the fair, uh, especially for for this one, uh, the next uh, book fair, the Cairo Book Fair. Actually, for for the next one, I I can't reveal too much information as we don't know what's going to happen, how well they organize it, how people will accept the fact that we are uh, having a big event as Cairo International Book Fair. We are hoping for the best anyways. Publishers are doing their best to uh, release new publications. I guess all the yeah. publishing houses are releasing new publications, hoping for the hoping for better sales as we were like posed for the past year but generally speaking Cairo book fair is very important and it's very big that's why we depend heavily on it or mainly on on the book fair yeah, I, I publishers in Egypt that. do participate in other book fairs as well but nothing is is like Cairo book fair it's a very important it's a very different even for other publishers from other Arabic speaking countries so uh, that's a main event that's a big event we, we all depend on and uh, we all really hope for the best for it otherwise i guess uh, some publishers may not be able to survive anymore okay um it will be uh, offline and uh, online uh, events or just uh, offline events uh, the book fair the next book fair I, i i guess it would go for for both sides they are already having an uh, online platform or okay. let's say an online application that that was happening from last year actually even before we we experienced the the pandemic here in egypt yeah. so i guess it would be both uh, one, one virtually yeah. and in person yeah. but mm-hmm. i guess the in person would be more prominent okay i heard that the location was uh, changing Uh, that the new location is bigger than before. Uh, is that true? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The new one is way bigger. It is much more in- organized. Mm-hmm. Actually, mm-hmm. as uh, as you may know, that uh, we used to have like tents mm-hmm. in in a, like on, on the streets, but uh, now we know everything is different. 
we moved to a bigger place, to more organized place where we have holes, organized holes for uh, publishers and all the, the publishing associations there. So uh, yes, then the new place is more bigger and more organized. Okay, yeah. Uh, I hope uh, the event will, will uh, uh, be getting better. Uh, everything will be uh, smooth. Uh, will be smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully, mm -hmm, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we, will, we, will, we will talk about uh, another topic. Uh, what do you think about the collaboration of uh, Indonesian and Egyptian publishers? And what should we do to improve that? Actually, what, what I always say, not just limited to the Egyptian-Indonesian collaboration, my word is always uh, a communication. Okay. Communication is a key for, for all the successful deals everywhere. If you are able to maintain good connections within the markets you are aiming to penetrate, then I think this is 50% of the deal you already got. So uh, what I think in, in general that... Uh, people that need to penetrate a certain market need to have um, a strong connection and a strong bond with some publishers and some publishing professionals in this area to be able to have this kind of collaboration, whether it's through publisher to publisher or through agents if possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, for the Indonesian-Egyptian collaboration, I think we need to work more on this as we have okay. already a lot of Indonesian students in Egypt that study yes. in Egypt. And due to the, uh, let's say, the difficulty of the language of, the, of Indonesia, we Egyptians are not really able to translate directly from Indonesian. That's why we are always asking for a bridge language like English. Mm -hmm. But I guess if we work it on those students from Indonesia that study in Egypt, Maybe we can train them, I don't know, and I'm, I'm just speaking loudly with you, if we can train them on translation things and translation aspects, I guess we can have a potential for Indonesian, Arabic and vice versa translators. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah translation is uh, important, I think. And uh, what do you think about the opportunities of uh, Indonesian books and content to penetrate the Egyptian and, let's say, Arabic countries market? And what kind of books that are most interesting for Egyptian or Arabic market, uh, whether fiction, non-fiction, or children's book? Actually, the the taste of the people actually changed every time. But for the most, I can tell that fiction is the master of all all the time. People really love fiction, and when it comes to translated books, they really love to go for fiction novels, especially those that are award-winning novels or for reputable author names. Also, there is a, a new direction at the moment. It's not a new direction, but let's say it's uh, heavily extensive this way that people are uh, willing to read non-fiction books about self-development, self-help, and so okay. on. But for the children books, we have already publishers that get the translation rights from foreign publishers. But uh, I don't think that we go such from Indonesia, actually. They tend to go for certain places around the world where they actually trust or they had good dealings with them before or countries that has the reputation of printing good quality children books. But let's say that uh, as Indonesia uh, produce uh, comics and uh, graphic yes. novels, this yeah. is a new direction now in Egypt and uh, in the mm -hmm. inner region in general, especially in the Gulf area like Saudi Arabia. The comic mm -hmm. books and the graphic novels are doing really good and publishers now started to shift this direction. Okay. So, we, I, I think some publishers already uh, produce comic books here mm -hmm, from themselves mm -hmm. where, where they ask someone to, uh, to have the novel themselves rather than even translating. So uh, okay. I guess then this one is coming so strong. Okay, so I can say that uh, the opportunities to uh, Indonesian publishers to penetrate uh, the market in Egypt or the Arabic countries uh, still uh, still 
big, big, yeah. Uh, yeah, we we really need actually to work and books and uh, a graphic novel or comics maybe. Yeah, for for children books actually, I'm talking from my modest uh, experience. Mm -hmm. I guess we we don't uh, get as children books from uh, Asian publishers in general because, as I just mentioned, they trust some European okay. publishers like okay. the Italian publishers for instance mm -hmm. because they have very good quality books mm -hmm. and also I want to highlight something that uh, um, support or translation grants is a very important oh, thing yeah. Egyptian and most of our publishers to get translation from different things into Arabic because the cost of translation with printing and cover designing and everything mm -hmm. that much money for for the publishers yes. so uh, uh, a translation grant or a percentage of support would be very significant here mm -hmm. otherwise you will find you know a few number of publishers that uh, translate titles of on their own yes okay yeah I think uh, it's interesting uh, it's the importance of the trans translation and uh, the translation grant yeah uh, translation so, is important because you yeah. know it lowered the gap between the cultures mm -hmm. yes yeah i agree and how is the prospect of uh, translations uh, books in egypt especially the translation uh, from foreign books like uh, indonesian to arabic what do you think about that mm. the translation books in general uh, they are doing good and uh, they are in high volume for the recent years, but mainly from English. And uh, otherwise, uh, we can go for French, German. I think those are the main three languages. Uh, but from Asian languages, uh, like in Asian language, yes. like Urdu, for instance, I guess it's still weak. We need to give it a push because of the vocality level of the language. If you mean yes. by translation from yes. Indonesian, for mm -hmm. it's really weak because the language mm -hmm. is difficult. But we still can get some uh, uh, foreign titles from Asian countries, mm -hmm. but in English, so we can lower the cost of translation, okay. easily find the translators, mm -hmm. and you know better of the time and money to produce such books okay yeah so or you uh, can learn from Arabic the second and language translate. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay great uh, yeah um, uh, okay uh, another topic and uh, what is the problem or challenges of publishing work in Egypt uh, in your opinion, especially in this uh, pandemic situation, in the hard time, what do you think? Yeah, the challenges, you mean? Hello? Uh, can, can you hear me, uh, Fatima? Yeah, yeah, I, I do now. I know you oh, said okay. the challenges. Okay, yes, uh, I, I will start, uh, I will uh, restart the, the question. Uh, what is the problem or challenges of publishing world in Egypt, especially in this pandemic situation, in this uh, hard time? What do you think about that? Actually, the main challenge or the main issue we always mm -hmm. face, not just because of the pandemic we are fighting for many mm -hmm. years ago, okay. is piracy. Piracy? Yeah, book piracy oh, okay. is a big thing here oh, in okay. Egypt mm -hmm. and in other countries as well, but I'm talking about my market yes. it's a big thing and we are fighting this so hard trying to defend this by even registering the the publishing house trademark filing cases again is those uh pirates but we, we are we are still having a real issue mm -hmm. and uh, this is generally but uh, uh, regarding the pandemic as i just mentioned that the lack of support as from the government the publishing, yeah 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 from the government uh, because the publisher has to stand on his own foot no no commands or no means of support from a government or any even private sector you need to survive all alone you need to think out of the box to rearrange your priorities to be able to survive because no one can actually expect what will gonna happen okay mm -hmm. um you you mentioned about the piracy uh so what do you do uh the, the publish what do publishers do uh or the Publishers uh, do with the piracy to uh, to erase the 
piracy in Egypt. Uh, and what the, go the government do about that? The best way is that we so raising awareness through our platforms and some publishing and professionals in Egypt to trying to raise awareness to the audience that buying such books is not good actually because okay. when when you are a reader that buys such books you are encouraging uh, the piracy yeah. and 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 these actually are not like the original they lack some pages the printing yeah. is completely different but people yeah, the quality is not because good, yeah. yeah because it's much cheaper than the original one because mm -hmm. that that one uh, who got the books by illegal way mm -hmm. he didn't mm -hmm. pay any opinion yeah. in like printing mm -hmm. publishing this book designing or yeah. anything he just copied the book mm -hmm. so uh, we start to raise awareness we start to clarify to the reader that yeah. this than the original one other as we through our trademark so, uh, book pirates we can uh, come about them so uh, we started do this like years ago and i think things are a bit better than the beginning but we are still having okay. the real issue yeah uh, i think Indonesia, Indonesia also facing the same problem about the uh, food piracy. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's actually everywhere, but with a ratio. Yes. <laughs> so uh, please don't don't buy uh, uh, pirate books. Yeah, to the audience. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what do you think about Indonesian publishing world, uh, Fatima? You have been to Indonesia two years ago, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, and in 2019, yeah. and actually yeah. it was a different experience for me, but I would love to, to make it again. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Indonesian publishers? Or Actually, um, I was uh, talking to an Indonesian publisher like last week, and I told her that it's a pity that you have very rich culture and very rich literature potentials okay. Thank you. and mm -hmm. it's it's not published to the world actually you have a very rich culture you have a lot to do you have a lot to be yeah. published and you need in my opinion that mm -hmm. you need more connections to the world to be able to show the world that the rich literature you already have and the potentials your authors and the publishers have okay. so uh, i guess you just need to work on the communication and and get more uh, connections worldwide uh, for me personally mm -hmm. actually why i am here today or why i'm progressing in a young age as some people say is because of the connections i managed it to to make even if you don't need this connection today you will definitely need it tomorrow yeah, yeah. but i don't want people to get this I am getting to know them to get advantage, you know, it's it's like, uh, yeah. as I always say, we make friends and then we make business, yeah. but it's it's very important, it's very important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Fatima. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for becoming our speaker, for your time, uh, for sharing your uh, opinion and many things. Uh, you can come again to Indonesia, to Jakarta, or another city. Mm -hmm. Maybe next time to yeah. Bali because everybody ah, is talking about Bali and I just visited Jakarta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you must go there. Maybe after the pandemic ended. <laughs> yes, ho hopefully, hopefully, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, okay, inshallah. Okay, okay Fatima, yeah. uh, I think uh, from this uh, book talk, you can conclude that. Um, we, uh, Indonesian and Egyptian uh, uh, publishers or uh, uh, Egyptian and Arabic uh, countries publishers have many collaboration opportunities to be explored despite of some challenges we face in this pandemic situation. And once again, thanks for sharing with us, Fatima. Um, Thank you so much, Anton, and uh, yeah. for all the team behind for yeah. uh, considering for this. It was a pleasure and it was informative for me too. So uh, thank you so much and terima kasih. Ah, yeah, terima kasih kembali. Asyukron, kasiro. 
I hope we can collaborate more in the future, uh, Fatima. And yes, for inshallah. all, okay, yeah, inshallah. And for all the audience, wherever you are, uh, thanks for joining us. You can participate with uh, giving your comments or questions in this uh, YouTube channel. Okay, okay, Fatima. Uh, good luck and goodbye. See you. Goodbye. Soon. Bye. <laughs>